We're back with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're ready for our first major conversation. Let's quickly give you a background. Well, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria at its last meeting raised the benchmark interest rate from 15.5% to 16.5% in order to rein in inflation and maintain the economic stability in the country. However, uh, the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria has raised the alarm over the increasing rate of tax revenue leakages uh, in the digital economy they said that despite the advantages linked to the expansion of the digital economy challenges arising from tax implications of the digital economy are perhaps the most urgent uh, that bedevil revenue authorities uh, policy makers international organizations and tax professionals well president and chairman of the council cit and additional adedayo revealed this during the Institute's uh, 47th ceremony, uh, where over 800 persons were inducted as members of the Institute. Now, this is the fourth time the committee uh, apologies for that mix-up. Well, we have to take that from the top. Again, I guess I got my script mixed up. It happens from time to time. But let me just take it uh, from the very, very, very top. Um, so the, the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria has raised the alarm over the increasing tax rate uh, in the country and the increasing rate rather of tax revenue leakages in the digital economy. Now, the Institute said despite the advantages linked to the expansion of the digital economy, challenges arising from tax implications of the digital economy are perhaps uh, the most urgent that bedevil revenue authorities, policy makers and the international organizations as well as tax professionals. Now, the president and chairman of the councils of the CIT and additional data revealed this during uh, the Institute's 47th induction ceremony where over 800 persons uh, were inducted as members of the Institute. And we want to know how important this sector is to the Nigerian economy. I'm glad to say we have our guests joining us this morning uh, to do justice to this topic and he's standing by. I'd like to say a very good morning and welcome to the director of the Center for Economic Policy Analysis and Research, SEPA, uh, Professor Ndubisi Nwokoma. Prof, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, University of Lagos. Yes, indeed, University of Lagos. Akoka, Lagos. I forgot yes. that right. All right. Fantastic. Prof, um, this, this digital sector of the economy, um, I mean, it's, it's relatively new. If you want to look at how many years we've had, for instance, uh, fiscal management of the economy since independence, really, um, it's a relatively new sector. How important is this sector and the overall fiscal stability of Nigeria, um, in your opinion? Yeah, um, I think the emergence of uh, the uh, economy that uh, we're talking about, that is uh, clearly digital is because of the growing trend of globalization. And we know that the, the world has become a global village, like we always say. And uh, there are four key areas that we can talk about that defines globalization. One of them is trade, increased trade among nations. The other one is uh, ICT, uh, internet penetration is very, very high. The other one is uh, Immigration is a, it's a, a critical issue globally, and the other one is the financial flows. So these uh, areas have made the world very, very small. We say globally. So trade is a key component. Increased trade, and also the impact of the contagion is a key component of globalization. And when we talk about uh, that, every country wants to maximize its earnings in this process, and that is why you talk about the. Um, uh, acknowledgement or being able to recognize income that is earned from your shores because you are dealing with many countries in terms of a uh, flow of goods and services, you know, tangibles and intangibles. And then at every point in time, income is earned by the various economic agents. And how can you now tax them? It's a, it's a challenge. Now, with uh, the transition of the economy, with uh, the, the growing use of the internet, and the, the, the flow of services, particularly, you know, uh, via the online channel, every country now has, a, has this challenge of being able to recognize income that is earned through its shores. And that is why it's a challenge for uh, FI, um, for 
FIROS or for the tax, you know, a person has to be able to organize income and to be able to help the economy enhance the revenue inflow. So it's a challenging area and it will keep on becoming relevant because the, the, the economy of the world is becoming more and more uh, globalized. We are becoming smaller and smaller. So trade flows are becoming more frequent um, and becoming more rapid. And uh, for a country like Nigeria that is just growing, it's a challenge for us to now know where the income is earned, particularly among uh, companies that have branches across the world, but national corporations that, you know, that have branches, subsidiaries across, uh, you know, cross-border, uh, you know, uh, transactions. So if income is earned in one particular jurisdiction, how do you pay tax? It's a challenge and it's something that, that has to be uh, properly addressed. Even the OECD has been able to talk about how to handle transfer pricing across uh, uh, various countries within the same group is a challenge and will keep on being something that will, for at least for some time to come. So, so do we attribute this to the fact that we're not um, so swift in terms of you know, technology and uh, the 21st century, if you like to say, kind of economy? Um, I, I wouldn't say we are not so swift. Nigeria actually has a, a deep level of uh, internet penetration currently, even in Africa. But like, in the last uh, government under Jonathan, they really did a lot when it comes to, to this penetration issues about the internet use uh, or technology use uh, globally. But it, it's an emerging trend. And um, the, the country is trying to write to the occasion by being able to make sure uh, it's it's, it tries to capture income because the key, the key thing is uh, income recognition. For example, we have a uh, Nestle Foods. Nestle Foods may have, may have a parent company abroad. And there's a subsidiary here in Nigeria or there's a, a, a branch here. And they, they do transactions. They buy raw materials from each other. And the income that is made by Nestle Nigeria should be taxed. And these things are, you have so much transaction, particularly talking about offering of market services or selling online. People now make sales online, like Jumia, there are goods that are sold online. Or you sell, you know, am I amazing? People sell goods and the income is earned. Then the seller earns income. And how then do you recognize that? That is the key issue. The point is now we've been able to enhance technology to so be able to recognize income earned. And that, that's the job of the tax, the tax officers. At what point has Nestle, Nestle Nigeria earned income by dealing with Nestle UK or Nestle America? And those are areas. So at what point, which income belongs to the, the branch of Nestle in the UK or the branch of Nestle Nigeria? Those are the challenges. And so technology has to be properly enhanced. And so when there's a flow of goods or services, when once, uh, let's say, Dangote Group, Dangote Zambia, there's Dangote in, uh, cement in, in Cameroon. There's that the cement in Zambia and so on. So when they transact within the same group, how do we know the income earned by Dangote group of Zambia and Dangote group of Nigeria? And to properly recognize the income that belongs to who it is when you recognize the income that you can talk about applying the appropriate tax by Nigeria, not by, by Zambia. So it's about technology on one hand, but not more. It's about income recognition. And that is a key, a key job for the tax officers. So, but Professor, I mean, just before Kofi steps in, are we not saying one and the same thing? That, uh, you know, because our inability to understand the dynamics of technology to solve the problem seem to be the issue? Uh, well, uh, depending on how you look at it, uh, because the, the, point, the point is that there is a, a, an increasing flow of transactions because of globalization. The, the flow has increased. It, it, it's not easier to transact like it was before. It is more of uh, the growing trend of globalization. So I can easily buy something from abroad now, easier than I could buy 10 years ago. So um, yes, from your own point of view, if we enhance technology for us to properly know when income has been earned by either party, and then know how to, to because so much is happening online, a lot is happening online, and that, that is why government has talked about being able to earn income through this means, because there are a lot of people sell goods now, people hardly own shops. You can stay in your house, have an online presence, and you transact yourself. 
and then you earn income. And then this, this uh, income is not recognized by the authorities as to, uh, to apply tax. So it's a matter of, uh, yes, enhancing their own capacity technology to know when income is earned. I can be in uh, Akoka here and, and I'm selling, and I'm selling millions of Naira without having a shop. And so it is a, the growing trend of globalization that, and the technology can also assist. So I, I agree to some extent with you that yes, if we're able to enhance capacity in this area, we can also be able to know when it comes and I want to apply the appropriate taxes. All right, you, you mentioned the OECD, um, uh, very important, you know, because one of the important questions that they had to answer was how best to tax the digital economy. Um, let's, let's, let's go practical. Before we go practical, I mean, I mean, we, we, we're seeing that the, the cost of living in the country is going up, you know, almost every single day. Inflation is, is galloping or should I say it's flying these days, it's developed wings and it's just flying. You can't even catch up with it. Um, is this the time to be talking about increasing the tax burden on Nigerians? I mean, people who take advantage of the digital economy are people who are trying to make daily income. Um, is it the man or the woman who is using uh, his car for a ride-hailing service just to make money just to survive? Um, we can see that they are complaining. A lot of them complain because I use these services myself. And they, they complain about what they get charged as percentage by the companies. You know, um, the companies themselves are also being pressured by government, not just federal, but even state governments to pay taxes. And it's, it's telling on the percentage that the, the rider hailing driver or ride, rider has to go with. You know, you look at those who are selling, you know, maybe using uh, uh, online mediums to sell. These are people who are surviving. So the question I'll ask you, to cut it short, is won't this affect the business people, those who are in the MSME sector, you know, because we do not simply need, uh, you know, more taxes maybe? Okay, yeah, uh, thank you very much. I think the, the point here is that um, Nigeria is not... Um, as tax as other African countries. If you look at the tax to GDP ratio in Nigeria, it's about 8%. So actually, Nigeria is undertaxed. Compared, I'm talking about comparison now, compared to other African countries, where it's about 15% of, of GDP. So there's room for more taxation. However, we don't tax those who are already paying tax, their fair share of tax. That is the, the, the little difference. That uh, most times you have multiple taxation in certain sectors. And in some other areas, there's no tax at all. The ultra-rich, the very rich, actually, are not paying, in my opinion, are not paying their fair share of taxes. The very, very rich, those who have these private jets, who have a lot of money, both onshore and offshore, they're not paying their fair share of tax. And then you have a lot of persons in the informal sector who are not even paying tax at all. So for, 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 for those who are already paying tax, I think government needs to restructure their tax program such that they capture those who are not paying and not overtax those who are already paying. Like there are those who are struggling, who are uh, trying to survive, who are selling. If they pay tax normally, their fair share of tax, that would be fair uh, because um, the government needs the revenue. But my problem with the government approach is like trying to tax those already paying who are now being overtaxed. So there's need for that uh, rearrangement, but the country is not paying sufficient tax compared to the GDP. It's among the lowest in Africa. So there's need for government to make more money through taxation. However, they should shift their focus on those who are not paying. There's a lot of persons, the traders in the marketplaces, the market women, those who are, who are in the, uh, even the underground economy, they're not paying tax at all. Some are paying almost next to nothing. And there are those who are paying, you know, SMEs, many of them are paying state uh, levies, local government levies, federal levies. And there are those who are, who are struggling to survive. Like you said, they have a high level of inflation and then they are being taxed more. That is where government now needs to restructure to make sure that uh, it is properly distributed across the, the, the economy. Hmm. So, but um, what do you make of this uh, thought or school of... Uh, argument where some people are saying that you know they are overly taxed at this point in time um, with the taxation you have some people who say uh, government is taking so much some people are scared of you know having businesses um, established because of several tax 
that will come afterwards. And on the other hand, we're still saying that Nigeria is on the tax, tax. Yes, it, like I said earlier, Nigeria is on the tax as, as an economy globally. Nigeria as a country is not, if you compare the tax revenue to gross domestic product, it's among the lowest in Africa. If you go to other countries, they let you pay tax for almost every, everything. The problem with Nigeria is the distribution of this taxation. That is the problem with Nigeria. We, we, those who are not paying are many, and those who are paying are being paid to pay more. That, that is an area, I say, that government has to look into. There are those who are not paying, or those who are paying very little compared to their level of income. They need to be identified and made to pay their fair share of tax. If you do that, the money that will, be, that will come out will be so significant. And then um, government has to deploy technology in being able to enhance this increase in tax revenue. However, as I said before, government should not overtax those who are already, and that's a very small portion of the population. But those on fixed, in, uh, fixed income, those who are in employment, they pay. And then they have to also pay through other means. There has been this proposal that government should increase the VAT beyond the current rate. So we, there are many proposals on how to increase tax revenue. But my focus is distribution. There are many people who are not paying their fair share. That is where the focus should be on, and not on those who are already paying. People like uh, maybe you and I who are in employment, we are already paying our fair share of tax. And there are those who are not paying anything at all. So the, the, the tax program should be structured to capture all that. Particularly the large informal sector, many of them are not paying tax. Or the ultra-rich, they are not paying tax as they ought to pay. That should be the focus. Okay. If we are able to capture that, then the tax revenue will, will now be commensurate with our level of GDP. I okay. think that's so there's no need to overtax some people, people who are already paying. That okay. is actually where the work is. Pro Prof, I, I hope the authorities are listening because um, indeed, you know, the, the tax net is not as wide as it should be, and I hope authorities, but um, if, if care is not taken, I think it's already happening in some some sectors. Um, Multi-taxation is, is a problem, uh, you know, before you realize you're actually paying the same tax over and over again in different, under different names. It's very important that that is looked at so that people do not suffer and businesses do not suffer. Already, we have a conversation about businesses going under because of the uh, increasing interest rate. Um, businesses are also trying, struggling to stay afloat because of the increase in cost of, of fuel, which is not even easily available these days. You know, so but 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 let's look at the, the issue of location. I mean, existing international tax rules assume that you need a certain level of you know fiscal presence, you know, in a country, maybe an office, a factory, a workshop, etc. You know, in a foreign country before you can make any significant uh, stable revenues and therefore before you are, are taxed. But a lot of these companies are not. Um, uh, resident in Nigeria, they don't have an office, a base in the country. Twitter, for instance, doesn't have a base in Nigeria. Um, you know, how, how will government work around this, you know, to tax uh, the, the, the main people who are making the money, which, is, which are the big, you know, tech companies, for instance, a Twitter, who makes money off advertising, for instance, a Facebook, who makes money off advertising, for instance, a LinkedIn, who makes money off, off advertising, for instance, a Google, who's making monster money of advertising, if they don't have offices in Nigeria, can they be taxed? Is there a way to go around this? Yes, in my opinion, the market that, that they are exploiting is in Nigeria. The market that is generating the income. If somebody is selling some goods to me from the US and he's offering a service and they, they are paying for it, or the market, or those who are paying are leveraging on my participation in the, in the process to earn income, then Nigeria needs to have part of that income. I think, uh, in my opinion, that is the work in progress. For, for there to be an arrangement where which both the, 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 the location of the company as well as the location of the market there will be some kind of a, a need for, uh, for a proportional uh, a, a arrangement in sharing of the revenue. For example, in the, um, the, the capital market, when there's a sale, when there's a transaction in the sale, there's some portion of the, of the income, when they come, if you are selling, that goes to the stock exchange, that goes to the to SEC, 
And there's another portion, if you are buying, let's say where you do a proportional uh, arrangement on sharing income. So I think it's a matter of income uh, uh, apportionment, being able to talk about who gets what. If a company, Facebook, is based in the U.S., and the income is, is generated is because of the market base in Nigeria. There, has, there needs to be a proportional uh, arrangement for sharing so that not all the income, because we are, we are being leveraged on to enhance the income of uh, Twitter or Facebook or, or whatever, or Instagram. So the digital economy actually is challenging. Then there needs to be an apportionment. So it's so much proportion of the income and will go to the to a particular country and the other proportion. So the issue is about uh, an arrangement and the, the thing could be either on uh, maybe cost base or market base, being able to determine what income is earned, what is the pricing, and what is actually how do we share the income between the location of the companies offering service and the location of where the market is. I'm, I'm in Nigeria and I'm patronizing Amazon, or actually I'm so good at this, so true Amazon. So, uh, how does Nigeria as a country earn income because uh, earn income through taxation because I'm the one paying? I pay online, and income is earned by the country based in the U.S. How does Nigeria... So it's a matter of an arrangement, which has to be done globally, All right. to know who gets what portion of the income, and what is the proportion okay. that uh, has... But everybody should get something, in my All opinion. Right. All right, uh, uh, Prof, we, we have to leave it at that, and I uh, would like to thank you very much for your time. Um, Messi, you have a question to yeah, ask? Yeah, just quickly, okay. uh, before we move on, uh, because we still have some time, we've been told that we have some time uh, to continue... Well, I'd like to ask, the primary reason that we pay taxes is that the government would use, you know, these taxes to improve public infrastructure, among others. Um, do you think that as much as we are on the tax as a country, do you think that the taxes that the people have paid uh, has been justified? In terms of maintaining... Well, when I say on the tax, I mean if you compare to the... No, I, I, the, I, understand, the I understand. My point if you is. Compared to other countries. Yes, the if ratio you compare to other countries. I'm saying so, that yes, with, with the little that, that has been paid, aspect. do you think that yes. there's a justification for it? Because the essence for paying tax is that um, government would use this to maintain you know, public infrastructure among other issues. So if you look at the public infrastructure across the entire country, I agree. Do, will you agree or will yeah. you say that? Um, there's a justification that these taxes that the government collect has been justified by, you know, public infrastructure across the country. Yes, I wouldn't say it is justified because many people actually don't want to pay tax because they can't see the benefits. Uh, so that is the reason why many people are trying to, to evade tax because they think that this money actually is not uh, going to benefit me. It's like money for government officials. So uh, government needs to do more for the little that they are collecting. Uh, uh, um, uh, Chief, uh, uh, Professor, sorry, we look at um, the case, the um, you know the cases uh, built or the the rules or the ideas considered by uh, the OECD. Um, they're talking about uh, you know establishing new bases for determining when a digital economy is liable to.